Hey, what is up, YouTube? On this video, we're gonna go over the fuel systems for your LS engines. We're gonna cover different ways to route your fuel system. We are gonna go over return systems and returnless systems. And we're gonna use this fuel pump that flows 255 liters per hour, a very popular choice for LS swaps. And we're also gonna use this bigger fuel pump that flows 380 liters per hour. I wanna get a Hellcat fuel pump, but the budget wouldn't allow. We're kinda of broke on this channel. We're also gonna cover the Corvette style fuel filter, when to use it, and how it works. So make sure you guys stay tuned. So, first, let's start off by drawing out our fuel system. So, we're gonna need somewhere to store the fuel that's not being used. So, that's gonna be our fuel tank. From there, the fuel will be sucked out by an external fuel pump. We will connect the hose from the fuel pump to the left side of the fuel rail. The left side of the fuel rail will be connected to the right side of the fuel rail with a hose. Each fuel rail will have four injectors. The right side rail will have a return hose that sends back all the unused fuel to the fuel tank. I will add a fuel pressure sensor on the return side and a fuel pressure sensor on the feed side of the fuel system. So let's go ahead and build this and see how it works. All right, so first we have this fuel jug that identifies as a fuel tank. So from there, the hose is gonna come out to our fuel pump. From there, the fuel pump will suck out the fuel, push it through another hose, goes into our left side where we have the gauge and we have our left side fuel rail. The left side fuel rail is hooked up to the right side with this hose that goes under the intake. And then from there, the right side gets fuel. From there, we have another gauge measuring that pressure. And then from there, the return hose will drop off the rest of the fuel into our fuel tank. In order to control our fuel pump, we have this switch up here. And in order to control our injector, we have this momentary contact switch right here. All right, so now we're ready to activate our fuel system. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on our fuel pump. You see that LED means it's on. So now we have the pump running and we have fuel returning back to the fuel tank. So now let's look at the pressure on the intake rail and we see there's no pressure on the fuel rail on the left side and there's no pressure on the return side either. Now when we activate our injector, you notice how the injector is kind of like squirting most of the fuel out. It's not a fine mist. So if it comes out like droplets, it's harder to ignite. So we got to do something to increase pressure. Most fuel pumps are rated in how much fuel they can flow, either gallons per hour or liters per hour. They are also rated on how much pressure they can handle or how much pressure they can produce. So in order to increase the pressure, we have to create some kind of resistance in the fuel system. Although this fuel pump can handle 87 PSI, the fuel systems on the LS work best at 60 PSI. So let's go back to the drawing board on our fuel system return style and see what we did wrong. So first we started off with the fuel tank and since it's not perfectly sealed, that shouldn't be an issue. Next, we added our external fuel pump that sucks fuel straight from the fuel tank and pushes to the fuel rail and that's not our issue. All this was connected to the intake on the fuel rail on the left side and then the return side was on the right going back to the fuel tank. So now let's look at each component individually and see if that could be causing our issue. For our fuel tank, the only way that would cause some kind of low pressure issue is if the fuel tank was completely sealed off, which would cause a vacuum, which would force the pump to work harder to suck the fuel out. So since we know it's vented to the atmosphere because I can smell the gas in the fucking garage, we know that's not the issue. So the next component in the fuel system will be the fuel pump. The only way this fuel pump will cause this issue is if the fuel pump itself was bad and it couldn't flow enough fuel. If the connections at the fuel pump or the wiring going to the fuel pump were too small for the amperage that it puts out. If the fuel pump wasn't getting 12 volts or if it had a bad ground. If the inlet hose to the fuel pump was somehow sucking in air, not just fuel. Or if the outlet hose to the fuel pump going to the fuel rail for some reason had a leak. Now the last major piece on our fuel system would be the fuel rails on the intake manifold. And the only way these will cause a problem if it for some reason, maybe we had a leaky injector or the fuel rails themselves were leaking. So since we don't have anything obviously wrong with our fuel system, let's go ahead and see our design and see where we messed up. The fuel starts at the fuel tank, from there it gets sucked out to the fuel pump and the fuel pump pushes that to the rails. From there, it goes from the left side rail to the right side rail and then returns back to the fuel tank. As you can see, nowhere in the fuel system do we have any sort of restriction that would increase pressure. So we gotta add that restriction. The best place to add this restriction would be on the return side because if you add it to the feed side, it will restrict how much fuel you gain to the fuel rails and then decrease the amount of fuel. So we are back to our fuel system. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this piece here to restrict the fuel going back to the fuel tank and that should increase our pressure. And we're gonna keep an eye on the gauge and see how that affects our fuel pressure uh, spray pattern on our injector. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this down and then restart the fuel pump and see what happens. So it looks like our Evil Energy uh, rubber fuel hose has called it quits. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this hose real quick and um, try it again. Now these hoses do get brittle after a few years. So I always recommend using PTFE hoses. So just a quick tip, if you ever have these rubber hoses that are still braided, even though they're recommended for fuel, if they start feeling like they have rigor mortis and they're stiff as fuck, I probably wouldn't reuse them or even use them at all. These hoses are the same, the rubber hoses, but I mainly use them for like transmission cooler lines. For fuel systems, I definitely recommend PTFE hoses. 
All right, so we got two new hoses or two uh, newer hoses. We're going to go ahead and clamp them down again. And then we're going to go ahead and check our fuel pressure to see if the increases of fuel pressure. And then we're going to check our spray pattern on our injector. All right, clamp is on. Let's go ahead and run this fuel pump and let's see how much uh, fuel pressure we get. So let's see how much is getting restricted. Uh, ignore that leak right there. It looks like we have about 10 PSI on the return and 10 PSI at the fuel rail. Now let's go ahead and run this injector, see what it looks like. So that spray pattern looks a lot better than before. Let's go ahead and jack up the pressure to 60 PSI and see what it looks like. I just picked up this adjustable fuel pressure regulator from Amazon. It says it's supposed to adjust pressure from zero to 100 PSI. I plan to install this on the return side and set the pressure to 60 PSI. And then we'll look at our spray pattern on our injector to see what it looks like. But first, let's go back to the drawing board and show you how a fuel pressure regulator regulates the fuel pressure. So on this fuel pressure regulator, we have three ports. We have one on each side that could be used for either inlet or outlet. And then we have the bottom one, which is used for return. So since either port on the left or the right can be used as an inlet or an outlet, it doesn't matter which way you hook up your hoses. If we were to connect the fuel hose to one side of the fuel pressure regulator, the same amount of fluid will be coming out of the other side of the fuel pressure regulator. If there is any restriction in the fluid flowing in these lines, causing the pressure to increase past the regulator's set limit, the lower return port will open to release pressure. All right, so let's go back to our fuel system. So we have our fuel pressure regulator hooked up to the right side of the fuel rail. We still have our fuel pump sucking out fuel from our fuel tank. That's gonna push the fuel up into our left side fuel rail. We can measure pressure here. From there, it's gonna go across the hose into our right side fuel rail through our other gauge, through the fuel pressure regulator, and then it's gonna dump back off into the fuel tank. So let's see how this works. So we're gonna fire up our fuel pump. We can hear the fuel pump burning. We see fuel going back into the fuel tank. Now let's check fuel pressure. However, we still have zero PSI on the left side and zero PSI on the right side, even though our fuel pressure regulator is hooked up. And the reason for this is because we have no restriction, guys. So we have to put some kind of restriction in the system. So if you recall, if you hook up a hose to an inlet side, the outlet side will have the same amount of flow. So we have to create a restriction. So if we cap off the left side, that would create enough pressure to where the return side has to open up to relieve pressure. So let's give that a shot, guys. All right, guys, so we made some adjustments to the fuel pressure regulator. The left side is not capped off, so the fuel has to run through the regulator, which is gonna restrict it. So now when we run it, we should have the same fuel pressure on the right side and the left side, and we should hit 60 PSI, and we're also gonna measure the return side to see if we have any kind of restriction there. All right, so let's get this party started. Let's go ahead and turn on our fuel pump. Now let's check out our fuel pressure. We have 60 PSI roughly on our left side, 60 on our right side. And we have zero PSI after the regulator, which is leaking like a motherfucker, so don't buy Chinese shit. Um, let's check out our fuel pattern for our uh, injector. And look at that. It's more like a fine mist, which is way easier to ignite. This is exactly what we want, guys. So this type of fuel system is called a return system. The reason it's called a return is because you have your fuel pump, which sucks out fuel from your fuel tank. It pumps it all the way to your fuel rail. From there, it fills up both sides, starting with the left side and then to the right side. From there, it hits your fuel regulator, which holds the fuel until the pressure hits 60 PSI, and then it opens up, and it returns it back to your fuel tank, thus a return system. So we're still going to use the same exact components. We're going to have our fuel tank, our fuel pump, and our fuel rails. We also have the fuel pressure regulator, which causes the restriction to increase the fuel pressure, but that was on the end of the fuel system. So remember that the fuel tank and the fuel pump are towards the back of the vehicle. So if we move our fuel pressure regulator to the back of the vehicle, that will make the return side of the fuel pressure regulator that holds a lot shorter. And in order for us to cause a restriction, we're going to have to cap off the right side of the fuel rail. All right, so we're back to our fuel system here, and we moved the fuel pressure regulator from the right side to the left side, and we also capped off the right side. So now we should build up pressure to around 60 PSI. As you can see, the fuel pump still hooked up the same way. It goes through the fuel pressure regulator to the left side fuel rail, then to the right side, and then it stops. It gets capped off here. We should increase fuel pressure to around 60 PSI. Once we get that increase in fuel pressure, the return valve should open up and relieve pressure to the fuel tank. So let's try it. So our fuel pressure is at zero. We're gonna turn the fuel pump on. We're gonna see that build up to around 60 PSI. The other side is also showing 60 PSI. And then we're able to see zero PSI from our return side because we have no restriction there. And now let's check out to see how the injector, it should still look the same. The mist should be perfectly fine. And it's good guys. So this is exactly what we want. So one way we could possibly make this system a lot better is if we were to incorporate a fuel pressure regulator with a built-in filter. And thus, drumroll motherfuckers, the fuel filter regulator from the Corvette was born. All right, so let's hook this shit up so I can show you how it works. So you got a fuel pump sucking out fuel from your fuel tank. It feeds it to the fuel filter regulator. 
From there, it gets pushed through after it gets filtered to the fuel rail. From the other side of the fuel rail, it gets stopped. Once that pressure builds up, you have your relief valve in your fuel filter regulator that would dump off excess pressure here. Now, if some idiot on Facebook told you this shit don't work, I'm gonna show you at the end why they're a fucking moron. So we start off at zero PSI, no shit, because the pump's off. Let's go ahead and turn it on. That PSI quickly builds to, holy shit, over 60 PSI. This filter's a little bit off, or maybe our gauges are off. But anyways, it's pumping, so look at that return fuel right there. And now let's check our injector to see how good that is. All right, we still got 65 PSI, good shit. All right, cool. Squirt, squirt me, baby. There you go, look at that, that's just perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you why this shit don't work. Ignore that fucking leak. If it ain't leaking, we're out of gas, so we're good. All right, guys, so we have our fuel filter regulator hooked up. We have this big ass freaking fuel pump that's supposed to flow 380 liters per hour. So what do you think is gonna happen when that big ass fuel pump tries to stuff its shit into this little ass fuel filter? What do you guys think is gonna happen to the fuel pressure? Well, we're about to find out. All right, guys, let's crank this bitch up, see what happens. Holy shit, this thing's sucking harder than a 17 year old on prom night. Look at that gauge spin around. Holy shit, this one's already spun around. Let's go ahead and check our injectors just for the shit and giggles. Holy shit, converted to a pressure washer. Let's go ahead and turn this shit off. Who would have thought putting a big ass fuel pump on a little ass regular would have increased the pressure like a motherfucker? Drip, drip. All right, if you guys liked the video, make sure you guys like, comment, and share this. That way it gets spread out to people that don't know shit about fuel injection. And if you guys want to buy quality stuff, not like this adjustable regular that we got off Amazon, make sure you guys hit up protonerstore.com and make sure you guys follow me on Instagram. I post stuff like this all the time for my subscribers and I'm actually doing another camshaft giveaway at the end of this month for all my subscribers. So you gotta make sure you subscribe to my Instagram.